We are contributing our part and have aligned ourselves to the WHO Global Strategy, which is to reduce physical inactivity by 10% worldwide. So we believe that this complete program, which is being carried out, will bring efforts to reduce or to contain the mortality rate caused by NCD. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rajesh, the host for today's episode. This is episode number two, all right? I would like to welcome all of you to WCM podcast. This podcast is to discuss on non-communicable diseases and exercise medicine topics related to our conference this year with the theme, Living with COVID-19, Combat- Combating NCDs. <clears throat> if you are new here, World Conference on Exercise Medicine have gathered participation of 59 speakers from medical experts to exercise scientists from 32 countries all around the world to share their knowledges and contribute their part in combating NCDs. Today, the podcast will be surrounding on the topic of strength training at home. <clears throat> in this topic, we bring you our respective guest, Ms. Asia Paik. She's a well-known international presenter, a graduate in kinesiology from the Faculty of Sport. I tried my best to get to know the pronunciation of this. Is Liuk Lena, is it? Perfect. 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 Okay, so it was, it, she's a graduate in kinesiology from the Faculty of Sport, Liuk Lena. <clears throat> this woman right here has traveled the world to many conventions as a presenter and is a wealth of information when it comes to group exercises and as well as home-based exercises. So grab your notebook and pen, be ready for some great tips from her as I welcome our beautiful guest today, Miss Asia Haik. Welcome. Wow, <laughs> How was thank that? you. That was a long <laughs> introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy that you're happy. <clears throat> I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Right. Yeah, I think we met 2019. It was like so fast. It's already been two years, right? You were in WCM 2019. I was not able to properly talk to you. I was not able to join your class that you did in our college. Um, Because, no, yeah, I was with the committee and everything, right? So, <clears throat> but it's okay. We get together here today. It's a great pleasure for me as well. All right. <clears throat> I went through... Um, a lot of things about you did some homework so um it seems that you <clears throat> you have uh, like license in multiple uh group exercises like zumba pilates um metabolic effect group fitness instructor and a lot and also your international presentation in many many conventions so um, i would first love to uh thank you for doing this for doing this for our community for continually promoting and encouraging people to exercise because these things make us happy, right? Because I was also an aerobic instructor like two years ago. <laughs> so this, when, when we conduct on stage for the people, when they get to follow it, when they get to do it, we feel so happy. Yes. I, right, right. It is a yes. satisfaction to us. <clears throat> so, um, pure emotion convention is going to be this year, right? So you'll be in there. Yes. Also. Is it confirmed? Uh, yes, it's confirmed for September and October. All yes. Right. Uh, I love Carlos, Carlos Ramirez. I met him in um, Korea when I, when I went there for Hena mm. Kim's event. 
So he was yeah. such an humble guy and everything. So I follow him all, all the while. That day I saw the poster for Pure Emotion and you were in the picture. So I was like, oh, damn, I like this. <laughs> He's getting excited. Right? Because <clears throat> after you, you went back from Malaysia in 2019, I started following you and I saw a very rapid growth and you were aggressive everywhere. You were like, everywhere I can see Asia. And then you, you that was a rapid growth. Is that so, or am I just excited? <clears throat> um, After the, yeah. Yes, actually, so I was in Malaysia in August 2019 for the World Conference of uh, Exercise Medicine. And very soon after that, I was still living in Slovenia. And very soon after that, I wanted a change in my career. I really wanted to, yeah, to grow, to go to the next level. And I was looking for an opportunity to do that. And I was very, very lucky to have been invited to move to Germany, to Berlin, where I now live and work. And I think that has been the big, the big uh, change. That's why my, my growth has happened. Um, the level of classes here is higher than in Slovenia. Um, I have more opportunities to travel. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, it wasn't the way I imagined, but still being in this environment that I am now encouraged me to grow. It pushed me to grow. Um, I also went to a certification, a workshop, so to say, in Paris before I went to yeah. Berlin. So it was all of was it things. was it with uh, was it with Zena Zena's one? Yes, that, that, was, okay, with, okay. that yeah. was with Zena, and it was a very. It's never just one thing that happens. It's always a combination of little things, of yes. small events, of conventions, of going here, taking this workshop, taking that workshop, and they just stack up, and then all of a sudden, as you say, like yeah. this growth happens. Yep. But it never happens all of a sudden. It's just, yeah. you know, it just slow. Takes yeah, slow time. rise. Yeah. Dividend yes. phase, right? <laughs> yes. yes. So the moment I saw you uh, with Zena, you wrote education, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, yes. Then, then you went into fitnessschool.tv. I tell yes. you, I was excited. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, honestly, I was like, oh, I've met her before. <laughs> now she's <laughs> <just> celebrating. <laughs> So I was really excited to see you literally get into these places, you know, um, no more people and grow in this field of um, international present, pre presentation or international aerobics presenter, right? So it is, I, I, I once dreamt of that thing, but then mm. it was not what I chose to do. So I just do it as, as for fun, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when I see people that I've met before, when I see people like, I see, of course, when, when you guys get to be at the places where I dreamt to be, it's like, wow, oh, that is so exciting. <laughs> oh, that's so nice to hear. That's so nice yep. to hear. I know what you mean. I'm always excited for someone that I yep. know, someone that I've met, someone that has worked hard and then they reach what they wanted and it's just like so satisfying. Yeah, yeah. We feel and happy for you. Thank I, you I, so much. On behalf, behalf of those Malaysians who, who, who love to do whatever we are doing, we, we are happy for you. <clears throat> we Thank are you so much. Thoroughly happy for you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, you just finished a convention last 31st July, right? Present this on tour. It's like a small event under Fitness School TV, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So, yes. Talk about it. I want to know about it. <laughs> it was, I, saw, um, I saw your video. I saw your video. It was. It was so much fun. It was, um, this is actually a, a smaller convention uh, that Fitness School TV uh, does in Berlin, usually every three months. But oh. then because of the pandemic, there wasn't an event for um, yeah, a year and a half. Yeah. And um, it was very special, I have to say, because it was the first event after such a long time where people could really come in not so limited numbers, like not just 20 or 15. Um, of course, we followed all the all the hygiene guidelines, all the rules um, uh, in order to stay safe in this uh, pandemic uh, situation. But 
it was just so liberating. It was so much fun. You could actually feel, really feel how people are having so much fun, how it feels like going back to the way it used to be. And it is totally no. different from online. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That it like, has, yeah, you, like, like you doing a class online. Those two. Yeah, yeah. totally different. Like you can't, right? <laughs> It's yes, so exciting yes. when you get to do the class in front and literally relate to those people. And then you'll be like, they'll be follow, we do it again and again for them and all that thing. It, it is yeah, so this different. Yeah, communication is online. better. You can really, you can really yeah. adapt the class to the participants finally because you actually see, okay, this part is going well. Here we need a little more time. So it's like more real, more natural. It makes more... Yeah, more sense, of course. And I think this is also the reason why we chose this profession, like why we chose to do this, because of the interaction with the people, because of the communication, because of the fun and everything. So yeah, it was really, really, really fun, I have to say. It was, um, although, at, yeah, I also had some fun also in the online conventions that we did throughout the last year and a half. You also, of course, it was new for all of us, but yeah. we just tried to adapt and we said, okay, True. this is what we can do right now. Let's make the best out of it. And we tried to make fun also in the online conventions. You try to like yeah. find a way for you to have fun. You find a way for the participants to still have fun. You find a way to connect with them online. So that was also yeah. like... That, that was like experience. a different world. The way we, we communicated was different. And the way yes. we had to learn things was different, right? Definitely. <clears throat> it was it was totally a different way of teaching and stuff like that. To communicate. Interaction is the most important thing in, in the thing that we do. Definitely. Right? <laughs> Definitely. Sorry, Asya, your your video is uh like like stuck. <clears throat> Could you restart okay. the video? Mm, I can stop it and start it again. There you go. Is it I better now? <laughs> okay. I, I, I can see you now. But, it, it was stuck. <clears throat> All right. Um, one more before we move into your WCM content. Berlin Nation. Of course. When is it? Again? Berlin Nation. Berlin Nation. Berlin Nation. Is it? So this, yeah. uh, this event that we just had, uh, uh, Fitness School TV presenters on tour, yeah. that was the former Berlin Nation. Oh, okay, 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 so okay. Now I get it. That was the event that used to be called Berlin Nation, and okay. um, now it's called uh, Presenters on Tour. Yes. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just I, I changed love, it up I, a little I, bit. We didn't want to limit ourselves to Berlin, so. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, when, when it is Berlin Nation, it sounds quite like Berlin, right? So when it's Presenters on Tour, it's like all around the world and everything. Yeah, I get it. Yes. Uh, industry i'll say right <clears throat> he's doing a great 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 job i love him although we don't know each other but i love him send, send him my regards <laughs> i will i will i actually have to say the same thing i most of the things that i know today especially when it comes to step and dance aerobics i learned from fitness school tv like mm. most of what i know so i also tell him all the time like that website is just so so important yeah. it's so rich it's so so yeah. valuable for everyone who does step and dance aerobics it's true. true it's there's so much knowledge on there there's so much yeah. things you can take from there so yeah i will send you my regards definitely we, definitely we have to literally go into the website and look at what is inside there to actually like appreciate the content that is inside there there's a lot of things there's a lot there's of there's a lot of things yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's move on to your uh, content, your WCM uh, mm. content. So it will be on strength training at home. Would you yes. run me through, give me a summary on like, what it is going to be, why strength training at home and so on. <laughs> okay, I don't want to give out too much information because sure, people will sure. be able to, to, <laughs> yep. uh, to join the conference and yep. to yep. see the whole thing. Yep. But basically, the idea is um, 
we saw the during the pandemic, during the, the lockdown in the last year and a half, we saw how important physical activity is on a daily basis in order to stay healthy. Um, and we saw a big, big, big decline in um, health in general. And a lot of um, um, incline in the, the amount of um, NCDs and all of that. And of course, the first thing we, we, we think about is good nutrition and sports. And then on sports, when you think about, okay, but what can I do at home? You are very limited. If there's the nice, if you don't, if you live in a country with nice weather, maybe you can do some sports outside. Maybe you can do some jogging, some hiking, some whatever. We will also, my colleagues will also talk about that. Um, but I think strength training is really, really, really important. And a lot of times we think, oh, but I don't have any weights at home. I don't have any equipment. What can I do at home for strength? And think, I think this is a very interesting topic for a lot of people. So I want to talk about different options we can train strength at home without much equipment or with things that we can find at home. Um, and I think that's very important also because uh, of the amount of companies that decided to go in the direction of home office. Many more people are now sitting at home um, at the computer, they move way less, they don't commute to work, they don't commute back, they don't walk here, they don't walk back, they don't, um, yeah, they just stay at home and then and work. And I think just a small amount of strength training every day uh, could alleviate, alleviate a lot of like back pains and shoulder pains and neck pains. So um, yeah, I will be going also in the direction of that kind of more like yeah, kinesiological so approach to strength training. Injury prevention as well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it is very, very important. Like, like the, the goal of exercise at the end is to prevent injury and continue doing it, right? We don't want to get injured. No matter yes. you are an athlete, like high-level athlete, or you are a, yes. like an ordinary person trying to exercise, you don't want to get injured because that's where you stop. That's where exactly. everything else comes in, right? So Yeah. Uh, it's basically sure. preventing pain in the body, yeah. like how to find how to fight pain in the body. Yeah. Um, and I've had some amazing um, feedback, some amazing results from my members here in Berlin. We have been teaching online classes for eight months nonstop, and still now I'm getting feedback from them, like how much it has helped them, how how important Sweet. it was for us. Sweet to stay with them and so on and so on. That is, that, is um, great. that is cool. That is cool. And also a part of what I've been talking about is for maybe for instructors, maybe for trainers, interesting. Um, to see, or I will be talking about how to communicate in online classes. So as trainers, we can do a lot online in terms of strength training. We can offer classes for strength training, but there is a different way how to communicate with people at home with the camera through the camera so i will be also talking a little bit about that that would be very helpful <laughs> be i very, think very so helpful. too <laughs> i think i think a lot of instructors and trainers are facing slight problems with that because the way we communicate has to change and there is a pa other pattern for that right because we're talking to the camera sometimes it feels like we're talking to ourselves <laughs> right yes we don't we don't yes. know whether what is happening on the other side right we are not there and whatsoever so and the intensity of the exercise cannot be pushed too hard as well right is that so yes you definitely have to keep in mind that you might have five different types of people on the other side you might have a professional athlete you might have someone with an injury, you might have maybe an older person, you might have a beginner who just started with work, like with sports. So these are all elements you have to keep in mind all the time. With, with every exercise you choose, you have to be very, very smart, but then also you cannot go too easy. You cannot, yeah. it's, it's very, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very as, hard. As, and, as you jump into client defined, exercises. I'd love to hear a few words from you. Like, how do you see that? Like, <clears throat> what are those, say, for example, you have a class and you have five different people 
everyone is different. As you say, some, some are 60 years old, and another one is 20 years old, and another one is an athlete whatsoever, right? They have their own pathological condition and stuff. So yeah. how do you uh, face that situation normally? Mm, always when it comes to, to the warm-up, I there's the same warm-up for everyone. Everyone needs a quick five to 10 minute warm-up. It cannot be too intense. It cannot be too easy. Just like something to to, to start to get the body moving. Um, and then in the main part is I always have different levels of exercises, and I always try to communicate that very clearly. There's level one, two, three, maybe even four or five. But I really, really try to be clear that it's not my workout and it doesn't matter what I want to do. It is your workout. It is your training. So you have to choose your level in terms of according to how you feel. So if you feel, oh, level one is perfect for me. I think my body is just like ready for this today. I will stay here. Please stay with that level. If you want a little bit more, you can go on. And I, I keep repeating that even when I show different levels and I change the uh, I changed um, uh, demonstration. So, so I'll be demonstrating level one for a while, then I will go to level two, maybe I will go back to level one. And I keep reminding them, this is just for you. This is just for you to have an option, but you choose whichever you want. So I think that, but there are also way I, Another way, what I do is I always do slow repetitions and fast repetitions. Because okay. usually people who are more fit, they will all, only want to go like super fast and super intense. So this True. is my way to bring them down and to make it slow and effective. And in the same time, do it for the people who cannot go so slow and vice versa. So interesting. interesting. Yeah. Um, um, in aerobics, we also try to do the same thing, right? Like, if you can't follow an advanced level of steps, just follow the base, right? The base step, just keep it right there. But people tend to like, they feel bad if they couldn't do the advanced level sometimes. They try to push themselves. At the end, they forget the steps and they cannot do anything. So it's very important to actually remind them again and again. Stay at where do you, are you, are you the most comfortable at, right? There's, there's yes. nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> yes. Same goes to strength training, as you say. Yeah, definitely. It's We always have to take into account that also people who were supposed to, supposed to, for whom it would be better to do a, a simple version, they will also always try to do the hard one. And it's this is just something we have to take into account. So what I always think about is, that I, when I teach online classes, especially, is that I don't teach too crazy things. Like ah. I won't go into, for example, um, uh, any like jumping exercises where the risk of injury is higher already, even for the people who are fit. I always try to avoid exercises like that and find different ways to make exercises hard without making them too risky or too complicated. You can always play with the speed of exercise. Sometimes we think, oh, if we do it fast and with a lot of jumping, it's going to be much harder. <laughs> yes, but we can also try to slow it down and make it really, really slow. And that also makes it really hard. So, yeah. but it's always going to happen that people will try, will go over the limits always. So always. <laughs> we have to take that into account as well and not go too too crazy with the yeah. different levels of exercise, I think. That is, that is like one of the challenges as a group exercise instructor that we face, right? Like, although we have the awareness of kinesiology, injury prevention and everything, at the moment we see like, say 50, 40 people in front of us and everyone is different. We are like, oh, I have to do what I have to do, but I have to also keep them safe as well. <laughs> it is a huge, huge, huge challenge. Right. It is. I think, unfortunately, a lot of people keep forgetting that. They get excited. Yeah. They get excited with the 40 people, 40, 50 people standing in front of them. And they just go like, wow, oh, crazy. And they do exercises yeah. that are like completely inappropriate for the group. True. True. 
because there's this idea that it has to be like uh, attractive. It has to be sweaty. Like, sweaty. Yeah, it has to look attractive. <laughs> it has to look like really cool. Like just a normal squat is not good enough. It's like, yep. guys, relax, <laughs> slow down, keep yep. people safe, and yeah. So. <laughs> I, I really, really appreciate, I really, really, really appreciate that you put this in front of like the other obligations that you have, that injury prevention should be the main, main, main goal. Like I, I see a lot, I'm, I'm not going to mention, but I see a lot of people tend to just go, as you say, haywire, just get it crazy, like intense and people injure them, themselves a lot. And this is what we don't want. People don't want to exercise, but when they come, we are breaking them apart. <laughs> it's not nice at all. <laughs> yeah, it's not definitely, definitely. I also think, besides from being group fitness trainers, we are trainers for those 45, 50, 60 minutes. But after the class, we, when we are in communication with members, we have to listen to them. We have to listen to how many times per week are they doing sports? And if they say like, oh yeah, four to five times, it's our job, it's our mission to say, whoa, 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 okay, what are you doing? What kind of sports are you doing? If you're working eight to 10 hours per day, you are already stressed, you are already tired, your body is already has gone through something. And then you go and you do, I don't know, a weight workout or like a metabolic workout four times a week, it's that's our lot. job to that's say lot. like, no, yeah. that's too much. You need, I don't know, some stretching or some Pilates or something that can help you put your body together to keep it together, not to break it apart every day. So True. I think that's a big role that we play. And we, as Everyone a lot of time, be person, an athlete. Everyone wants yes, to be an athlete. <laughs> of course. But I think we are sometimes as group fitness training trainers underestimating our job. We think, oh yeah, this is the personal trainer's job. Like they are the ones who write down workout programs, like weekly programs. Why not us? We have enough knowledge to know yes. what is right and what is not right. We just have exactly. to be conscious. Yep. yep. I think. Consciousness, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, be there to listen well, to people and also to yeah to learn how to talk to them and to say like okay no 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 one step back like and yeah, to direct yeah, them in yeah. different directions true, true. to do that with a person would be much more easier but then as a group exercise instructor you must be able to do that with multiple people multiple conditions that that is the the perks when I say being a group exercise instructor, right? That's that's a skill and also. Okay. Yes. Um, in Malaysia, I, I want to know whether this thing occurs around the world. In Malaysia, we have we we all have pre choreography and pro choreography, right? Like Zumba, Pilates. We have the choreography. Mm -hmm. We yeah. we we present it to the to our clients and our participants. Then you have pro choreography like freestyle aerobics where we break down and we do the steps, say step aerobics or normal aerobics, we do it in front of them, we break down the choreography. So in Malaysia, there have there there, there is some fanatism in these groups. People tend to break into groups like we are all pre choreography people, like we do Zumba, we do Pilates. Then when it is freestyle aerobics, they're like, ah, that's too hard. That is only for like, you know, uh, I used to be like pro choreography kind of person. And then I found that, come on, it is preference. It is what people like and what people don't like. You might do both, right? Like you, you, you are a Zumba instructor. You're also, because when I look at Europeans, when I look outside, they are like that. They are like, they look, they do both. They do both yes. and they're okay with that. So I, I, I always have this question whether only in, is it only in Malaysia that we have this fanatism and stuff or does this thing occur outside as well? Um, I guess here, maybe in Europe is more of a preference thing. Like I either want to or not want to do it. Um, I know the, the problem we are facing, problem we are facing right now is that the 
as you call it, pro choreography, like the step and aerobics classes, they demand more preparation. So you have to prepare the choreography, you have to prepare the breakdown. It's not just you learn the choreography and it's done. Um, so it demands more work before the class even starts. And that's why a lot of instructors are like, oh, I don't want to do that. This is too much work. I'm not paid enough money for it. And it's, I completely get it. You know, it's a lot of work. Um, and maybe that's why they go into more like other types of choreography, yes. choreography classes. Yeah. Because it's, um, I guess it's just easier. But I know a lot of people who teach both, who teach pro choreography and free choreography classes. And both. I think it's just a preference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like, those, those I like who, it those who can. Like it. Those who can teach both, you have more clients. <laughs> That's yes, and also, I think teaching different types of classes, you're able to develop different types of skills, different ways of teaching a class, different ways to use your voice, to use your body, to use your cueing, to use your brain. I always, I, I was, I was always open to. I teach basically. I can teach any type of class, of course, on different levels, because I don't teach everything at the moment, but I was always open to teaching everything. It was never like, oh no, that I cannot teach that. For example, I don't know. Can you do a work, a class for the spine, like for the back? Oh no, that I cannot do. I'm a trainer. I can always make a class just for the spine or, um, I remember I used to teach a lot of like step aerobics and Zumba. That was like years ago. And really? my my boss at the time, she asked me if I could teach some Pilates classes. And I was like, oh, Pilates is so boring. I'm the type of person who needs like, you know, like yeah. power all the time. Yeah. And now yeah. Pilates is one of my favorite classes yeah. to do. <laughs> you just have to try it. You have to give it a real chance. Like not just try it one time, but give it a chance, teach it for one season. And then you see, okay, this is for me or this is not for me. I think that's for every group tr trainer, that's very important to, to be open to teaching different types of classes. I, I, I started off lifting weights. Then when I uh, went into college, that's where I got to know Mr. Amin and mm -hmm. aerobics and everything. So. The moment when I was introduced to that, because before that, lifting weights, you know, men, alpha kind of thing, oh, aerobics, uh, you know, then when I went into college and I saw them doing it, it was, I, I, I was uh, attracted to aerobics more in the perspective of mental challenge. It's like, you have to like, you have to be intelligent to actually come out with a choreography with a breakdown and you have to know how to, communicate to the people, you have to break it down into a few levels. It's like, wow, that's, that, that needs a lot of brain work, right? So it's, it's a challenge. You know, sometimes I love to take final products from presenters. I'd like to just break it down. You know, how would I teach this class? Oh, that, that is so, so interesting. And sometimes there were times where I just lay on the studio feeling like, ah, come on, I can get this done. <laughs> Right? Have you yes, ever gone through yes. I, I'm sure you have gone through all that thing. Of course, that is that is a yeah. great exercise for every pre presenter, for every trainer to see a choreography and say, ooh, or even see how the person teaches it and think, yeah. hmm, will I teach it the same way or is there another way I could teach it? Like that's, that's, um, that's a great exercise. And I, a lot of times people say like, Oh, I don't want to come to step classes or aerobics. I, I'm tired from work. I don't want to think about this. I don't you know. But I always say, I think it's a great, great, great exercise for the brain, for the participants. It's like coordination. coordination. You have to think, you have to really be present. And I think being present in such a class really enables you to not think about anything else. You know, sure. because when you go to like a workout class, the brain is still going like, oh, what did yeah. I do at work? What am I going to make yeah. for dinner? Oh, tomorrow. You know, I have when they're, to when they're halfway down with their squad, they're like, oh, I got to cook for my children. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They're, they're always thinking. But when you go to a step or an aerobics class, you can't think of anything. Yeah. 
yeah. really like a mental a mental break i think um, you have to be conscious at all times yes yes and everyone laughs when i say it like that they're like what really yes come yes. try it you will see <laughs> it is the moment we walk into the studio is already like a different world it's like oh yes. i'm back to paradise yeah let's go <laughs> it, it is, it is yes. so I, I really miss we are still under movement control order so we cannot move around and our gyms are still closed um, oh, wow. so it has been like it has been like three months since we get to got to go to the gyms and studios and you know so being in that studio like simply listening to an aerobic song trying to break down something oh that's a lot of fun <laughs> i really yeah, enjoy yes. it yeah. all right um i would like to save a lot of from your topic for the conference but last one more question quick question i would like to just simply put aerobics and strength training on your table which one would you choose this is just like we know both are important we understand that but Ooh. Like, yeah, which one are you <laughs> Um, I, oh, it's very hard to choose, very hard. Um, uh, but I would say if I really, really, really have to choose, I would choose strength training. Um, okay. If I'm thinking about what I have to offer to my members, to my people. The thing is, we can always try to get some aerobics in, like go for a walk or go out with the kids or go for a jog or we bicycle, we take the bicycle to work or something, or we maybe live in the fourth floor in the building and we can take the stairs. There's always ways, yeah. but strength training, we don't, we really don't do it enough. We don't do it enough. And, um, I guess I would have to choose strength training, but I have to say it out loud. It's very important to do both. A lot of people then just go for strength training and forget the aerobic part, which is super important for the heart, for the um, cardiac system, like for the uh, vascular uh, system. So, but also through strength training, through different type of strength training, we can also incorporate aerobics inside. So I would go with strength training. if. If you like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted you to say something because people tend to choose, right? There are runners who never touch weights at all, and there are weightlifters who, like, oh, cardio is gonna kill my gains. I'm like, oh, come on, you got you have to do some aerobics, man. You have a heart right there, you have to take care of it. And then exactly. for those runners who, who are like wearing their knees and their ligaments out you need some strength training you gotta get them uh, strong yes. enough to sustain at least what you're doing right so it's always I, I would always like to say like it is always a complement of each other like aerobics and strength training they, they complement each other and you as you said you can also do aerobics training through strength training like high repetition you know get the get the heart pumped exactly up, right? low weight high repetition and you gave two very, very nice, uh, very nice examples, like the runners and the weightlifters. It's a very common thing, very, like, it's something that we see all the time. And if those people only knew that if you do strength training almost every day and you do two cardio sessions per week, I don't know, 30 minutes or 45 minutes, your gains will still be there. Yeah. And your heart <laughs> will be very happy. And for the runners as well, like, they would run so much better if they just knew which muscles to train um, with some additional weights. They're afraid that it was going to like slow them down, but yeah. might actually <laughs> give them more power and speed. True. Exactly. Kinesiology graduate is saying so by listening, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. I, would, I would love to save all the other stuff for the conference. Um, this is for the audience. If you want to catch up with um, Asia's uh, presentation it will be on day three so far we have not finalized the schedule it will be in day on day three um asia will be presenting her title on strength training at home so if you think that you are not doing enough strength training or if you don't have enough ideas on how to do strength training at home 
you better watch a presentation. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on. Bring your notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring your notes. There will be a lot of tips from her. I, I believe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I have some fun and entertaining question for you, right? Um, okay. Just to just to get to know you more and then um, see uh, your perspective and everything. You'll be fun. Just just for fun and entertaining purposes. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, we will start from underrated or overrated. So whatever that I'm saying, you, you will you should actually judge. You just say whether it is underrated or overrated, right? Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. okay. Uh, I've tried my best to put as much Arabic stuff and things related to us, so let's see. That's not much, okay? Um, Starbucks. Starbucks. Yep. Overrated. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, 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 Overrated. Is, it is an obvious thing, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hope <Okay>. so. <laughs> High intensity interval training. Ooh. Uh, overrated. Overrated. Okay, okay, that's interesting from you. But I would yes. also agree. I would also agree because people are moving towards those HIIT, Tabata, and everything without. And that is the place where people tend to forget this injury prevention stuff. I very much look at it like explosive. You gotta beat the hell out. And then I, I got injured twice doing Tabata some pain in between on my scapula. I was like, oh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing something right, right? I'm pushing myself yes. too much. <clears throat> Having this awareness, I'm still, like the mentality brings you towards that. High intensity yes. has to be, <laughs> right? Yeah, So I think it's overrated because in the past few years, this has really exploded on the market of fitness. And now it's gone down a little bit, thank slightly, God. But slightly. there's still yep. so many things on YouTube and Facebook and it's like free trainings. Yep. Yep. And then when people want to like lose weight or they want to start working out again, the first thing they go for is like True. this high intensity, like a True. quick fix kind of thing. True. That's why I think it's overrated. These workouts were made for professional athletes to make them faster. If you are a 35, 40, 45 year old mother with three kids. I, you don't need Tabata workout. If, if, if we bring them to the track and tell them to spring for 20 minutes, they wouldn't do it. But of they course. would go and do Tabata. What's the difference? Exactly. <laughs> and some, and some, um, and some instructors and as well as trainers, they, they do. I, I, I would, uh, um, it is very hard for me to say this, but then they don't really understand the concept of high intensity training. They, 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 just, they just think like, put as much exercise as you can, do it as fast as you can, get as minimal rest as you can, get it done, go back home. High yeah. intensity interval training is like pushing your heart rate up. It is an athletic training, right? First of all, it is an athletic it is. training. It is. Why would you want to bring this to the general public and like literally kill them, I would say? Right? Yes. It's um, for the general population is definitely too much. Definitely. I remember when we used to in my old um, in Slovenia, in my previous gym, we used to have it only two times per week. And people would be mm. like, oh, we want another we, we want another slot on the schedule. And we were like, no, no, already <laughs> yeah. this is too yeah. much. Like you do it two times per week. You do two other workouts per week. You are like doing You're way done. too much. You're done for the week. Yeah. So that's why I think it's overrated because it's um, it's like a quick fix. It's like an instant coffee or instant something, you know, it's like... Exactly, exactly. It's I love it when you say all this. Out, but it's not the best choice out there. True. So True. It, it, is yeah. never a, 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 it is never a place to start, first of all, and it is Ever. never a, a better choice for anyone, right? Thank no. you for saying that. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock. Dwayne Johnson, the sexiest man on earth, underrated or overrated? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you don't like him? <laughs> In my opinion, I don't know. No, that is not my type. I guess it's okay. just a better type thing. So I okay. guess overrated. <laughs> overrated. Okay, okay. I, I can accept that. 
<laughs> I view it more of uh, in a point of view of like grinding every day, like working hard and all that thing in terms of career, right? So that's where I I I, I tend to look look towards him. <clears throat> But lately, only lately, I started to look like follow him a little bit. But everyone has their own perspective anyway. <laughs> yes, okay. it's a, just a time thing. But he's a hard worker, yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the next one is quite special. Fitnessschool.tv. Overrated or underrated? Underrated. Right. <laughs> I know you think that. Yes. It, is, it is underrated. Too, too yes. underrated, I would say. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like I said, most of things that I know in my career, I've learned from there. So, cool. for, there those so who, for those styles. who are listening, uh, for those sorry, for those who are listening, I'll, I'll love to say that if you are a group exercise instructor, or if you love to do group exercise, if you love to do online exercise, get to fitness school like Doc TV. I, I can promise you, they have the best instructors around the world. They're the best. I've seen them all. I've met them. I've met most of them. Um, and there's a lot for you to do. You don't have to like simply go and search in YouTube. You don't have to go and simply just get it everywhere. Finishschool.tv. I recommend go and yes. go and go go in there. <laughs> you can also yeah, see Asia in there. <laughs> you can also see me in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next squats. Underrated or overrated? Ooh. 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 <laughs> mm. This is a tough one. They are well they are underrated in a way because we say like oh what should I do for my legs? Like what kind of workout should I do for my legs? Oh yeah, just do squats. In that terms, they are underrated because it's a hard exercise to perfect. Like to do a squat correctly, exactly. it's very, very hard. So I would say it's underrated in this sense. Okay. Um, and in the other sense, it can also be overrated because there are so many other exercises we can do to target different muscle groups in the legs. While most people think like, oh, squats are it. Like that's it, that's all I can do. Um, but if someone cannot do squats, there are still thousands of other exercises they can do and they will still be able to train legs. So, this is a tough one. <laughs> no, the, the way you explain it is fantastic. Like, it, it is how people should look at squats, right? It is not, it is not the mother of all exercises. That's how I normally listen to people say it. It's like, mm -hmm. squat is, like, my squat will never be same as your squat. Right? Everyone has different squats. We all have different bone architecture and everything. So our joints are going to move differently and stuff. So Definitely. it is never the same. Never try to copy another person's squat because they might be doing something detrimental for you or even them without knowing that, right? Exactly. <laughs> so. I, I love your answer. It's underrated and overrated. You can also say properly rated if you want. <laughs> properly rated. Okay. For, for some for some of the other options. Okay. Uh, okay. Next, Carlos Ramirez. Oh, I love it. <laughs> underrated or overrated? Ooh, I think that's really again like a type of. Um, it depends on uh, um, personal style. But he's an amazing instructor. He's an amazing instructor with so much experience, with so much knowledge. And, um, and he is so, so, so humble. You know, the first yes. time I, I met him in Korea, he came and like, introduced himself to me. I was like, the whole world knows you. <laughs> Why would you want yes. to come and introduce yourself to me? He was like, yeah. I'm Carlos. Yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah. The way he delivers his classes is just, Yep. No, it's just it's just amazing. Like just watching him teach. Like you don't even have yeah, to do yeah, the class. Just yeah. watching him teach, having the whole class under control, the way he moves, mm. it's yeah, beautiful. I'm having goosebumps when you are saying you when you are describing all this thing. He yeah, literally yeah. is I'll call him like his classes are like a phenomenon. Like yeah, he can just control he doesn't say a word. It's like he doesn't say a word, yes. Yeah, he can control yeah. his smile, with his arms. You know, I love to see presenters who can 
who can make the entire class interesting, not only the final product, right? Yes, the breakdown. That's, that's, he can do yeah. that so perfectly. Like every single breakdown, he can make it so interesting. Ah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, and super fluid and very clear. And yeah, he's, he's one of the best, definitely. He's one of the best there is. <laughs> Like. <laughs> All right, next, next. Fitness practice. Our ring, what's our fitness practice? Oh, we have thousands of them, I think, now. Overrated or underrated? Hmm. I think. Mm, hard question. Uh, I think it depends on the tracker and the person. If they are like just simple basic fitness trackers, they might not be very reliable. So we cannot really rely on them to be like, no. Nah. And the other thing is if, if it works for someone to keep them motivated, to keep them moving, to keep them active, great. For some people, it just doesn't work. Um, that's me, for example, they don't work for me. I forget to track things. I forget to put things into the app, into the tracker. Um, same goes with food trackers. For example, for people who want to like track their food, I'm horrible with that. So that doesn't work for me. But I think, yeah, I think they are underrated in terms of like how much they can help someone to stay motivated, to stay, um, stay on track. But then again, People get into the trap of yeah. of being tracked by this app, and they get so focused on that, it just becomes about calories. It becomes about yes. minutes. It the, 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 about numbers. the numbers try to overcome whatever ultimate goal there is, right? They are very yes. much focused. I would I say, it. maybe I would say overrated. overrated. After all, I, I, for I like general population, overrated. For professional athletes. That's a different thing, but for general oh, population, yeah. Yeah. just move your body. Like just go True. and move your body. Forget the trackers. True. Forget if the calories. Forget the calories. Forget whatever and that you're thinking of, right? Yes. Go for a walk. Go for a drive with a bicycle. Ride with a bicycle. Dance. Do whatever you want. Just yeah. stay active, and that's all the tracking you need. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, G Lopez. Overrated or underrated? Oh, you're killing me today with this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be easy for you. <laughs> no, I don't want to um, definitely underrated. I mean, it's another person with so many years of experience. One of the, the, the greatest there is, one of the people who have contributed so much to this sport of step and aerobics and still is contributing and always yeah. growing, always staying in the front and always being motivated and no it's just the amazing moment, to watch him the play. moment when i saw him i was like man you are the father for this thing <laughs> he is like i'm gonna change i'm gonna follow the young ones and i'm gonna push this forward even more so yeah he's so motivating to actually look at him Ah, he's, he's, he's quite, he <laughs> he's and a lot of things we can also learn from him and his his school is also like he yeah. he has his own way of teaching and I think it makes so much sense. Yeah. I see uh, your video is stuck again. Again? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it like this. Okay. I hope Got I'm you. moving again. Yeah, you're moving. All right, <laughs> we can't we can't avoid all this technological stuff, man. It, it is of always course. there. I think after a year and a half, we're all used to it. In the beginning, yeah, we yeah. would all be like True. so paranoid. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, he's freezing. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Next, Slovenia. Underrated or overrated? Underrated. Okay. So underrated. <laughs> it's a it's a beautiful country. It's really 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 beautiful. And we have so many successful people coming from Slovenia. Also in the Olympic Games, we had many medals. Uh, we have a lot of uh, scientists, a lot of uh, like a lot of knowledge coming from our little tiny 
country with the population of two million. So um, oh, that's yes, we are really really small. Uh, so so do, you, do you guys welcome guests? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay, of I'll course. try. I'll try my best to visit when when all this thing is over. <laughs> Definitely, you should. You should. Yes. All right. Okay, we go. We go fast. We have three more. Okay. Ketogenic diet, overrated or underrated? <laughs> overrated. Okay. Next. For ge for general population again. I I love. Very... I love it when you say general population because we don't track anything. We don't look at our own data. We don't like we. If 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 you ask a person like how long did you sleep last night, they'll be like thinking, uh, I think it was around six or uh, was yes. it seven, <laughs> right? So as you say, yeah, I love it. Next, Tiger Woods, overrated or underrated? Oh, I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not very, I, I, I know who he is, but I'm yeah. not very familiar with him. So I, I okay. think it's hard okay. to answer. All right, I'll answer yeah. very mm, okay. properly rated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, last one, last I one. I just know he's a super, super duper talented person yeah, yeah, who was yeah. since always, like since he was a kid. He, he, was like he, a he is very, very, very hardworking, right? He, he's very, very, very hardworking. And he's the best the sport, the golf sports I've ever seen until now. Like it has been like 25 years. Until now, there's none near his potential during his prime. Of course, athletic, athletes have their prime, and you know, so none of them like came near to his prime. Last one. Last one. As Asia Pike, underrated or overrated? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. I will say underrated because um, I think many times other people appreciate what I do more than I do myself. That's why I say underrated um, and because I still have so many ideas and things that I want to do and it's just um, just now starting to, to realize itself. So. Um, I will go with underrated. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I know there's a lot more to come from you. There's a lot of years ahead. I wish you all yes. all the very best. Right? I'm, I'm younger than you. I think I can still wish you all the best. And I, I wish to see you succeed in your life. That will be happy. I'll be happy for you. That's for sure. Thank you I actually so much. Have, That's like, so nice. Personality question. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I actually have personality questions. But then I think we shall... And it right here, right? Um, I'd like to thank you so much for basically giving your time an hour from your <clears throat> busy schedule. I really, You're really welcome. appreciate. I really, really appreciate that. Um, thank you, Asya. It was a great, great pleasure chatting with you in our second episode. So you will be your episode will be up say in an, in a week, right? Okay. So I'll, I'll tag you in Instagram. I'll also tag you right now. Let me just yes, do it. Do it. Do <laughs> screenshot. <laughs> I'll tag you. All right. Okay. There you go. I got it. <clears throat> so thank you very much. I hope to see you in the conference and in the future, if I'm able to travel to your conventions, I'll be there. I'll try my best to be there. All right. If, if uh, you have your free time to travel to our conference as well, be there. We can chit chat even more. <clears throat> it has been a great pleasure, as I said great. earlier. Yeah. Um, and thank you, Rajesh, for inviting me. It was lovely chatting yeah. with you. I had a, I had a lot of fun. So, yeah. um, um, Misha told me that you replied for the podcast. So I was like, okay, I'm going with Asia. I'm going to host a podcast because <laughs> I've met you before. So I was like, it'll be nice to actually chit chat with you, right? <laughs> and and we have a lot of things that we do in similar. So it'll be very nice to relate and talk about. It. So thank you again. Thank you very much. I hope. Thank see you. you. Go on and on. Just get whatever you want. All right. <laughs> All the best. Thank you. To you as well you. and to the conference. I'm looking yeah. forward to see the the final product, the final event, and to enjoy the the other yeah. lectures, the other um, speakers. It will definitely be an interesting one again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it will be on 29th October to 2nd November for those audience. If you want to meet Asia, 
register at www.wcm.com.my. It is a very, very, very brief registration. It is like literally three to five seconds you can get yourself registered. <clears throat> and then we will email you whatever reminder and everything. Okay, thank you. I hope to see you again, Asya. You too, you too, in person, in Malaysia yep. or in Europe, yep. definitely. Yeah, I hope to be in Berlin, right? <laughs> yes, okay? yes. Okay, thank yes. you very much. See you, bye-bye. Have a nice bye. day to you. Bye-bye.